Hey guys, just uh, noticed there's not any good instructional videos on this new thing out um, called the Damiki Rig. So I want to kind of just give you a basic tutorial on, on what we've been doing here. Um, I'm from East Tennessee, obviously, if you've checked out my page at all. Um, East Tennessee here, we've, we've kind of made our own little niche uh, set up here for a, uh, an interesting little bait. Um, it's called the Damiki Rig, or that's, that's kind of what locally it's known as, Damiki Rig. Um, it's kind of a local little secret that we, uh, that a lot of us have uh, passed around in some small circles. A lot of the locals here don't even really know about it. They've probably heard about it. Don't, don't really, uh, don't really hear a lot about it unless you're, you're kind of in the know. Um, even if you have heard about it, you probably don't really even know what's going on with it. So I just kind of, the cat's out of the bag now. Everybody's, everybody knows about it. It's, you've had countless hours of Bassmaster Live, Mark Zona telling everybody about what uh, Jesse Wiggins and Mueller and, and all those guys were doing over at Cherokee uh, last weekend. So I just kind of tell you what we do and, and how we do it. So everybody will know, even playing field again. Um, the Damiki Rig kind of got its name, um, it's kind of popularized at South Holston Lake. It got its name from the bait that everybody started throwing on this rig, uh, which was a Damiki Armor Shad. So everybody kind of just, just known it as a Damiki, or you'd say, oh, they're out there throwing the Damiki. Everybody kind of knew what, what it was, even though not everybody throws a Damiki um, on this bait. Um, what it is, is a, uh, it's a technique that we use here in, in our clear water impoundments, so the prim primarily smallmouth lakes, Norris, Cherokee, South Holston, um, and a couple other little lakes around here, but, but mainly it's our lakes that are, are non-fertile. Um, we've got some zebra mussels in our lakes, so the water's really clear. Um, it, it's, a, it's a bait that, that's used mostly smallmouth. You'll catch a large mouth occasionally, but it's mostly smallmouth uh, technique. Your, your, what you're doing with this technique is, is going around, um, basically video game fishing, or that's what my friends say I'm doing when I do this. Um, it's basically hunting. You're, you're going off those steep break lines on structure. So the edges of flats, uh, the edge of the points up on points, um, anywhere from 45 to 20 feet deep, anywhere a, a, a school of smallmouth, an individual smallmouth is going to sit in the winter time. So everybody knows wintertime fish like like depth change, easy depth change. So it, they're always going to be sitting on the edge of a break. So points, uh, guts in a channel, in a little ditch, um, depressions, uh, points at the end of a bluff are really good for this. Um, on Cherokee, I think that most of those guys were, were fishing the edges of flats and the depressions in flats. Um, but really it's anywhere you're getting a depth change. Rock helps with this, but anywhere there's a depth change. The technique itself is, is basically just a, a shad style bait, a minnow style bait on a jig head. Um, you want it to have a 90 degree line tie. So there's two heads that, that people use. One is this this little shovel head like that. Um, see 90 degree line tie there. It's a shovel head. Um, a lot of people use that. The one we prefer is, is that we home make this. It's just a ball head with a, with a really good quality hook in it, a smaller hook. Um, just a ball head. Three eighths ounce is what you're seeing everybody throw in this. Uh, I've heard of some people throwing half ounce, but that, that tends to look gaudy and, and kind of unrealistic. I mean, that, that's starting to get on the gaudy side itself, but still it, it works. And uh, you'll see, so you can even go quarter ounce, you know, when you're fishing that 20, 25 range. Uh, but generally three eighths is, three eighths ounce is what everybody throws. 90 degree line ties a must. Um, what you're doing when you're video game fishing, you're, you're seeing that fish on your graph you're dropping down to it. You're the you'll see the fish on your graph. You want to want to feather that bait down right above that fish. Smallmouth like to feed upward, so you're feathering that bait down right on you know foot two foot above him, and letting that fish come up. You're not you're not working it. You're not stroking it. You're feathering that bait down on his head. That 90 degree line tie is a must. It lets that bait sit sit perfectly horizontal above his head, and then you're not doing nothing. You don't need to work that bait. You don't need to stroke it jig it whatever just the, the, the subtlety of the boat movement itself is going to be enough to, to have that fish to buy it's winter time those fish aren't the, the fish aren't moving the bait fish aren't really moving 
So you're putting that bait above his head, let him come to eat it. When you're working that bait, you don't want your lot your rod up. You don't want him to catch you, you know, with your hand in your pocket. You want to have that that when you're dead sticking that bait, have your rod tip low, let him eat it, and then you have all that rod to set the hook. So um, you see a lot of people actually with their their rod against the gunnel of the boat. I don't like to do that because you you'll miss a bite or two. But um, just a low rod tip, dead stick it about a foot over that fish. No need to even work this bait in the wintertime. Just dead stick it above his head. It's it's a dummy. A dummy technique. Um, what else? Setup we use seven foot medium spinning rod. Uh, you just want it light because because the line we're throwing on. We're, we're using ten pound braid. You want small braid to come off that spool easily. Um, just make it as fluid off that spool as you can. If you see that fish, you can just point your rod at it. Let that bait take that braid off your line. Small braid comes off so easily. You just drop it right on them. Uh, I'll typically go two or three rod lengths of um, of a liter, four pound fluorocarbon is what, what you're seeing everybody use. Um, if the water is not super clear, you can go up to six. I've heard of two pound line to this. I, I don't trust it in a tournament situation. Um, we do have zebra mussels, so if you hit the bottom, your line, I mean, anytime you hit the bottom around here, your line is going to have some damage just from all the zebra mussels we have. So two pound line is a liability in my, my opinion, especially if you're in a tournament. So uh, four pound Four pounds typically the consensus bed around here. Um, so, as far as baits go, yeah, the Damiki Armor Shad was the first one to to kind of be used around here. But we we've learned you can throw anything on it. A lot of people do it with just a grub. They'll throw a grub on it, a half a fluke. A lot of people throw on it. My favorite bait um, to put on this is a Gambler Shaky Shad, and not a lot of people have heard about it. It's a uh, it's a four inch bait, but it's segmented, and I'll typically take a piece or two off if I want to get get subtle. Um, if I'm catching a lot of small fish, I'll leave the whole thing on there, the whole four inch bait. Um, but it looks good on either of those heads, that, that little shovel head or the, the ball head. It looks beautiful. They have a color called Ghost Shad, which is kind of translucent with some glitter in there, a little darker back. Beautiful bait. Um, that's, that's what I use. Uh, but I mean there's a host of other baits you can use but that that shaky shad is pretty good on there um, I got some footage here coming up that, that that's all I use is that that shaky shad and it, it really really did the trick today um, as far as colors in this you know with the water being so clear with this being a, a sight feeding technique you're going to want that bait super realistic so bait fish colors especially you'll see some pearls occasionally but bait fish colors it, the one exception is early in the morning especially when it's super cloudy I'll go with a dark a really dark bait like a green pumpkin or or, or a darker bait fish color reason being is because those fish are coming up to see it it's low light that fish has to kind of silhouette that bait against the sky so in darker darker situations light uh, low light visibility um, a little bit darker bait can get you a few more bites sometimes until it starts to, to kind of get a little lighter in the day um, Bait rod. That's that's about it. I mean, it's 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 kind of more hunting than it is, is fishing. Really, you're not going down the bank throwing this. You're just dropping it to them. So, light line, small baits, realistic. It's it's, it's kind of a West Coast ish technique, but we've we've made it our own around here. A lot of people probably hated to see this this trick on TV um, and on the internet, but uh, it is what it is. So, here's some footage of us catching some fish on it. Uh, hope you learned a little bit. Hope you use it on your lakes. I imagine lakes across the country, Table Rock, uh, Lake of the Ozarks, all those upland reservoirs, this will, this will be a good one. Probably work on spotted bass just as well as it does on smallmouth. Our smallmouth here, our reservoir smallmouth, act a little bit more like spotted bass than typically smallmouth around the country. So um, I imagine you guys could probably catch your, your spotted bass, especially those big Alabama spots on it. Uh, so here it is. Here's some fish catches. Uh, thanks, guys. There he is. First drop of that thing. First drop. Hell far. You're killing me. Oh, he's a big one. Oh. <laughs> nice. 
shit. Can't, can't go too fast with them. The water's 10 foot visibility. These are four pound tips, so you gotta go slow, but I mean, when they see it down there, they just eat it. Crap, what do I do with my camera? That's the kind of fish you catch on too. Four pounder probably. Three and three quarters, four. Oh, oh, oh what a toad! What a toad! What a toad! Oh. Crushing him on that thing, buddy. Boom! All Another right. one. Yeah. Another one. 